All right, everyone, let's do a manometer problem today. We haven't done one of these um, in quite a while. So this is going to be from the Fluid Mechanics book by White. Uh, this is the seventh edition, so it's a little older edition, but that's okay. So we've got a manometer here. We start out with oil. We're given the SG value, the specific gravity value is 0.85, and then it switches over to mercury and we got water and then we end up in this open tank here so notice it's open it's got atmospheric pressure pushing down on the surface of that water and the atmospheric pressure there is 14.7 psi so it tells us the system is at a temperature of 20 degrees celsius and we want to compute the pressure at point a which is right here um, in pounds per square foot absolute all right so it wants absolute pressure not gauge pressure so keep that in mind we're also given gamma for water is 62.4 and then specific gravity of mercury is 13.6 all right so now we've got that before we go any further though i just want to make note of um, the specific gravity so remember specific gravity of a liquid it's basically a dimensionless ratio and we can use density or specific weight for that so if you use density it's going to be the density of your liquid over density of water or we could have gamma of the liquid over gamma of water okay so i just want to point that out because we're going to need that in just a second okay so this is a manometer problem so the equation that you're going to use just the basic general equation we're going to have a change in pressure going from 0.2 to 1 here and then it's going to be equal to negative gamma, right? Which remember, gamma is specific weight. And then you're going to multiply that by the change in height. So Z would be height. Okay. So we're going to apply this equation here to this situation that we've got. So the thing we need to do first is we need to pick a reference line that we're going to use to measure the altitudes from all right so i see these two lines here so i'm going to make this my reference line so this right here will be my reference line all right and it's just going to go basically all the way across here all right so that'll be my reference line i'm going to use that the rest of the time now what we're going to do i always start on the left side and then work my way around the tube okay so this is point A right here, and I'm gonna label this point right here, at the top of the mercury, point one. Okay, now I'm gonna use this equation for this little light pink section, okay? So we're gonna have P1 minus PA, and then that's gonna equal the negative of the gamma for the oil. Now, I don't have gamma for oil. I have SG for the oil, right? It's 0.85. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that SG value, the 0.85, and we're going to multiply it by the gamma for the water. All right, just using this equation right here. I'm just trying to solve for this. So we just take SG times the gamma for water. Okay, so we got 62.4 write out our units here and then this now is gamma for the oil okay so now I need my change in altitude all right so I need z1 so the altitude right here at point one measured from this reference line well obviously this reference line goes through point one so this is going to be zero and then point a if we look right here to the center, we've got six inches above our reference line. So we're going to put minus um, six inches, but I need to convert to feet. So let's do six over 12. Okay. And then let's go ahead and multiply this out. So it gives me 26.52 and then pounds per square foot. Okay, so this is the pressure difference from here to here, from A to 1, okay? Now we're going to continue working around the little tube here. So let's say this is 0.2. So now I want to go between 1 and 2, 
All right. So using the same equation, we're going to have P2 minus P1, right? Because the 2 would go first because I'm going from 1 to 2. And then we're going to put that equal to the negative of the gamma for mercury. Now, how are we going to find gamma for mercury? We were given SG, right? So we're going to have 13.6 times the gamma for water, which is 62.4. All right, so now this together is gamma for mercury. All right, and then we need our elevations or our heights. Okay, so I need the Z that goes with point one, or point two, I mean, and we're gonna measure it from the reference line. So that means I need the 10. Now notice that's in inches though, right? So I wanna convert to feet. So let's do 10 over 12. And then what about the Z value at one? Well, we already know that's zero, right? We found it before. So point one is right here on that reference line. So that's gonna be zero. So now if we do that product, we get negative 707.2. That's pound force per square foot. Okay, so we're almost done here. Next one, we've got this water, right? So we've got the water right here, and let's call this point three. Okay, so same concept. We're going from here over to here. So now we got P3 minus P2, and then it needs to equal negative gamma for the liquid, which is water. So that's going to be that 62.4 was given. So let's write that out. And then we need the height. Okay, so remember we're measuring from this reference line. Okay, so for point three, which is right here, the top of the water, notice this distance is five and this total distance is 10. So that means this difference right here is five inches. So we're gonna put five over 12, that's feet. And then we wanna subtract the Z value at point two, which is right here. So measured from the pink reference line, point two is up 10 inches. So we're gonna put 10 over 12 for feet. Okay, and then that gives me 26 pounds per square foot. Okay, so now we're done with the hard part. What we're gonna do next is just get our final result. Okay, so what we're gonna do now that we've worked our way around the whole manometer is I'm gonna sum up these two columns. Okay, so let's start on this right side, just add these together. And we get negative 654.68 pounds per square foot. And then over here, if you were to add all of these up, some of these are gonna cancel, right? So if I have P1 minus PA plus P2 minus P1, the P1s cancel, right? Same thing with the P2s, because I got a positive and a negative. So this is gonna leave me with P3 minus PA, okay? So put it together. And then P3 minus PA has to be negative 654.68 pounds per square foot. Okay. All right, so now what do we do? We wanted to know what PA is, right? I want the pressure at point A in absolute terms. So that means I need to find PA. Well, I can do that by figuring out what P3 is. What do we think P3 is going to be? Well, what do we have here? We've got this atmospheric pressure, right? Pushing down here at point three. So we're gonna set P3 equal to that 14.7. All right, now notice the units here though. This is PSI. This is feet squared, right? So I need to do a conversion here. So that means we're going to do um, 144 inches squared per foot squared, right? And then that gets us the units we want. 
So this will be 2,116.8. And now we have pounds per square foot. Now let's take this, plug it in for P3. Actually, I call this PW for water. Let's call it P3. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to have the 2116.8 minus PA equals negative 654.68. And then we just solve for PA. So when I move this over, it's going to become negative. So we're going to add these together. It'll be a negative number, but I got a negative here. So the negatives will cancel. And I end up with 2,771.48. And notice we included atmospheric pressure in here. So that's what gives us this absolute pressure. Because remember, there's difference between absolute pressure and gauge pressure. Absolute pressure, you're going to include that atmospheric pressure like we did here. OK, so this would be our pressure at point A. All right, so 2,771.48 pounds per square foot. All right, hopefully that one made sense. And that's kind of how you do these manometer problems. First thing you want to do, pick your reference line, then just work your way around the tube. Do this equation for each of the different liquids or substances, and then sum up your left column, your right column, and then go from there, all right, to get what you need. So hopefully that was helpful. I hope you all have a great rest of the day. I will see you all next time.